Hello again, Awesomers. It's me, Steve Simonson. I'm coming back again with another episode of the Awesomers.com podcast series. Today is episode number 143. And uh, for the uninitiated, that means you just have to go to awesomers.com slash 143 to find some details and show notes about today's episode. Now today, I'm just going to do a very brief episode where we're going to talk a little bit about the Canton Fair. So I'm still in Seattle as I record this, but I'm on my way to the Canton Fair in the next 24 hours or so. And uh, I think a lot of people get their minds twisted about China. Uh, they get confused about the, you know, which fairs and what's good and what's bad and this and that. So I'm going to give you a little context before I dive into kind of my top five tips on what you should think about and what you should do with the Canton Fair. So the first part about what people get twisted. If you listen to so-called gurus or experts or, you know, people selling courses, uh, you know, or whatever, they usually are selling something. And they're like, hey, you know, uh, forget Canton or forget Iwu or forget China. Everybody speaks in absolutes so that they can make their sound thing, make their own product or service sound unique and special and, and so on and so forth. And I just want to say, um, since I have no skin in the game, I don't care if you go to any of these fairs. Um, <laughs> It's up to you. The The reality is any of the opportunities that exist, whether it's Canton Fair, EWU, uh, other conferences, trade shows, uh, they all have merit. And I can tell you firsthand that I've sourced products at EWU, successful products at EWU. Uh, I've met with trading companies at EWU who do hundreds and hundreds of containers a year just in, from that one single trading company. And... Uh, as a matter of fact, I was in Iwo, I don't know, last year sometime, and the meeting before us was Walmart, right? So that same trading company happened to be dealing with Walmart as well. And although we didn't end up doing a deal with them, the point is anywhere in China, there's scale, there's opportunity, and, and professional sourcing uh, and experienced people know that anywhere is opportunity. So I'm not saying Canton Fair is the only place to go, but I am saying it's a good place to go, and it's a good place to begin. Uh, one other note about this concept. So my team in China, the Simo Global uh, team, you can kind of check out some of the things over at simoglobal.com that we've done or, or that we do. We are sourcing roughly 20, 25 items right now. And 80% of those are not at Iwu or Canton Fair. So people ask all the time, well, you know, how do you find a product if it's not at a fair? And the answer is, you know, it just takes work. There's all kinds of um, directories, associations, and sometimes it's just knowing factories already or knowing other resources who can introduce you to those factories. It's, you know, it's a lot like being a detective. You got a problem, figure out how to solve it. And obviously experience and locale and language helps. That's, that's why the China team does it and not me. Uh, but my point is there is no one single solution you can do great things at Canton, you can do great things at Iwu, you can do great things in Hong Kong, and many, I could name, you know, dozens of other things, or you can skip it all and find things directly. I know a lot of times people want to just hack their way to the single answer, and I'm here to tell you there isn't one. So all the guys speaking absolutes telling you their thing is the only thing, my absolute is there is no one thing. You can make it work for you. Um, that said, if you're heading to Canton Fair, I want to share some of my advanced tips and tricks. And again, if you want to see some of these things, you can pop over to awesomers.com slash 143. Now, before I get in the top five um, kind of things to know about the Canton Fair, I want to let you know at that Awesomers uh, podcast uh, webpage, I've added in an hour of content, video content, over an hour actually, about an hour and 20 minutes, in, which include the top seven China sourcing mistakes, uh, a little presentation I, I recorded some time back, and also expert travel tips for entrepreneurs or sourcing people who are going to uh, China for the first time. These are some of the, the soft touch things you may not think about. Uh, you know, what do you do with the water? How do you deal with electricity? Um, you know, what, what about translators or this or that? A bunch of basic things that we talk about. And it serves, uh, I think, the time for podcasters best. Just go to that page. You can watch the videos there at that time. Maybe I'll record them or uh, put up the audio at some point as a uh, podcast as well. But today, those exist in videos on YouTube. 
So here, let's talk about the, the Canton Fair. Uh, number one thing to know, in my opinion, and I'm going to give you my top five and then talk you through them very briefly. So the first thing to know is you can save a ton of time and energy if you register online well ahead of time. And I have to say their registration process is clunky. I think it's stupid if you want to know the truth. And it's annoying. You need to upload things like your own photo, your own business card, and they go through a manual application process. And this is way easier to do ahead of time and not stand uh, time in a long queue or online, as uh, some people would say. Often the very first days of the Canton Fair, you will find extraordinarily long lines. So tip number one is register online ahead of time. And a subset of that same tip is don't lose your badge. You will be charged to get a new badge. So once you have it, you can use that same badge again and again. And remember, Canton Fair is twice a year. And it started way back in 1957, by the way. A lot of people don't know that. In, in 1957, it's built up now to where over 190,000 attendees will, will converge on the Canton uh, Fair, which is located in the city of Guangzhou, China. That's in the southern part. And that's, that's a lot of people, right? That's 190,000 attendees. And there are over 25,000 exhibitors with um, you know, massive, massive amounts of uh, different products and different sizes and, and you know, all kinds of different things. One other key thing, and this I, I didn't put in my top five, but you should already know this, Canton Fair is broken into three different phases, which have very different themes. For example, phase one includes things like electronics, lighting equipment, vehicles, spare parts, hardware tools, chemical products, building materials. And if that doesn't sound like you should be there, you shouldn't be there. Um, whereas phase two is mostly consumer goods, gifts, home decoration types of items. Phase three gets into office supplies, cases and bags, recreational products, medical devices, uh, health products, food, shoes, textiles, garments, etc. So you really need to understand which phase you're going and to, to make sure that your type of product will be there. That, that's uh, maybe the, the most important one <laughs> of all. Maybe the list will go from a top five to a top six. I don't know. Uh, the second important tip I think that people don't think about is your attire will define you, uh, but it's also really hot. So I personally, uh, I've been doing this long enough that I don't have to go in and feel like I need to make a, a face impression. You know, in China, it's a face culture. So I don't feel like I need to have on a fancy suit because by the time they check me and my company out, they'll go, this guy's a real company. But if you don't have a website or you're brand new or you don't have uh, kind of a lot of history and a lot of trading history, I think you should probably dress up because without that, China, the China um, booths or exhibitors, uh, the factories there, they will, they'll judge you based on kind of how you're dressed and the lack of other supporting information will make it really only that, that data point for them to make a decision on. It may seem silly, I know. Um, again, it's, I will probably walk around in shorts, uh, because I don't care. And if I do decide to place a PO, uh, then they'll know I'm serious because I have a long history in China and, and a team and, um, you know, credit, blah, blah, blah. So, but if you're fairly new and you don't have a really established company or really established credentials, like if you're not, you know, Target or Walmart or, you know, Macy's or, or these big companies showing up, you, you. I think it behooves you to dress the part, as, as they say. Okay, uh, tip number three, uh, a lot of people, they, they handwrite things down or they staple cards or this or that. And I'm fine with whatever you want to do note-wise, but I'm going to tell you what I do. Uh, I use Evernote, and we will make a note for each supplier that we think is interesting. We'll take pictures of the front and back of their card. We'll take pictures, sometimes even a selfie with the, the sales rep or the factory boss and you know, myself or whomever is visiting that particular booth. Uh, we'll take pictures of certain products uh, that we think are interesting, maybe even catalogs or catalog pages, so that that uh, Evernote turns into almost like a dossier for the, the product. And if you think about it, now, by the way, Evernote has a free version, and until you pass some relatively large number of online storage or whatever, 
it's it's free and you can just use it and try it out uh, but when you do this you have so much better comprehensive details and data in my opinion you can also obviously hand type notes you can you do video and audio recordings and, and insert them and even better you can then share them when you get back so not only can you refer to them you can share them with your team when you get back and that is a huge opportunity for you to say hey I think this is a, a you know a product we should consider developing what do you think and you can collaborate and and let you know turn it over to somebody else um, for anybody who knows me I don't like to do anything uh, and therefore I want to delegate everything so if I come up with a harebrained scheme I'm gonna kind of document it I'll put in my, the context of why I thought it was interesting and uh, maybe even add a video or audio note to it so they they really have you know firsthand information and then I'll let them take the ball and see if the economics work. So again, I use Evernote, I think it's great. There are other similar uh, products out there, but for me, that's uh, an easy solution. Uh, tip number four, just know that negotiating is a, a typical part of the buying process. So don't be afraid to negotiate, but don't start by negotiating. You know, if, if you are already buying a pen and somebody quotes you $10 for that pen and you know you can buy them for a nickel each then you, know, you can go hey well I'm already buying these I buy them for a nickel what's your price they'll they'll get serious really fast but most of the time you won't find those nutty quotes that somebody will say you know well this thing is gonna be eight cents and you say well I'm buying it for six cents now you know is that something you can you know get close to and then you know you kind of negotiate and talk about the process it, it's not always a price driven issue because what they will say is often they'll say yes yes we can and as I've talked about this many time the China version of a yes could be everything from yes to not in a million years no and they still say yes or they say yes we can or in Chinese they say Kai. so when you see you know the sales guy uh, you, you make a demand to the sales guy the sales guys translate that into Mandarin for the the boss usually they, they like to call the owners the boss and uh, the boss will say Kai. and so then the guy will come back and say yes we can but they really don't necessarily mean yes we can they mean again everything from absolutely yes all the way to hell to the no so don't get suckered into that and how do you know the difference maybe the logical question going through your mind you just have to keep asking questions and qualify the response and ultimately they will uh, either support their yes with real data and capability or they'll eventually go, you know, it turns out maybe this is not a good fit or no, we actually can't. So all of that is just a normal thing to, to consider. But negotiation is reasonable. And I know I've talked to, I don't know how many, many, many entrepreneurs and they're like, ah, I'm not a really great negotiator. You know, when they say a price, if I can make money on it, that's fine. And it, listen, you can, it's your business and so you can do what you want. It's always your decision. But I can tell you, you are will not be a... Uh, a great buyer until you understand that everything, every part of a product, uh, a sourcing mission, shipping, everything should be fully vetted and negotiated. And e even if you say you're not a great negotiator, let me challenge you to say that it's your fiduciary duty to your shareholders to make sure you get the market price for the product that is being built. Now, that doesn't mean you somehow, you know, on a miracle are going to be able to buy something way cheaper than everybody else because there is truly a market price you just want to make sure you find that market price and the best way to do that is get multiple quotes uh, so I, I'm not going to dive into that anymore except to say negotiating is okay negotiating is really even uh, part of a professional process and don't over negotiate if you push too hard on price they'll just engineer the quality down and sometimes the the quality engineering downward will be things you can't even see you, you don't even notice but it will bite you in the butt later when you get complaints or bad reviews and uh, one other subset of this negotiation is don't forget to that you qualify and understand who you're buying from I don't care if they're a trading company a sourcing agent a factory everybody's got their place in the ecosystem but I think you should just know who they are and you know over time it'll be easier and easier for you to understand and qualify who they are so uh, the final the the fifth point I want to bring up is to bring a backpack or a bag or something if you like to collect product catalogs and all the other info they like to 
staple their card to the catalog and they, they just want to load you up with tons of stuff. I hate carrying stuff. So most of the time I just say no and use the pictures and Evernote. Uh, but occasionally I'll come back with some catalogs if I think they are important. One, I don't know, ironic part of the problem is so many of these factories have beautiful, brilliant, four color, 200 page catalogs and like no websites or their websites are terrible or way out of date. And you'd think it would be the opposite, but I've seen that um, many, many times where they have great catalogs and terrible websites. So sometimes it, it actually does behoove you to, to collect those catalogs. But I wouldn't get nuts and, and feel like that the more weight of catalogs you have, the better your trip went. That's certainly not math I would do. Uh, so anyway, bringing a backpack or a bag will help you. Uh, now, I, Canton is a beautiful city. There's lots of things to do, wonderful restaurants, uh, amazing sights to see the, the Canton Tower and the river and so forth. Uh, and again, world-class hotels, restaurants, and so many things. And there's tons of meetups uh, with Amazon sellers and entrepreneurs and, and many subsets of different buyer types all through Guangzhou. And you should just search online, search Facebook groups if you don't know about any of those, and you'll find lots of opportunities. Uh, I will be there. Uh, if, if you are there, don't hesitate to you know, find me on uh, LinkedIn or Facebook or WeChat or wherever I am. And uh, if, if I'm going to something, you're going to something, I would love to shake your hand and say hello. Uh, as you know, I love entrepreneurs and I believe entrepreneurs are making the world a better place. That means you are not only improving your own life, which I think has to come first, you improve the lives of those around you, which is kind of the, the natural evolution of that improvement that you started with you. And then it goes beyond that, right, to, to the, the world around you. And I truly believe entrepreneurs make the world a better place. And, uh, and I want to support that journey for, for entrepreneurs. That's why I do the Awesomers podcast and, and so many other things. Uh, along that line, by the way, if you've been following the KevinAndSteve.com project, Kevin King and I have a really, really interesting scheme that we're hatching. It can uh, really help entrepreneurs. And I can tell you now that I'm announcing on behalf of uh, the KevinAndSteve.com project that we are going to do two mini reveals coming up in May, and they'll be in person. So at the Empowery Seattle Summit, Kevin and I will both be there. And at five o'clock on May 16th, we'll have an after hour session just for those who wish to attend. And we will unveil basically the idea and the concept and give people there uh, at that meeting first dibs. Uh, secondly, uh, we will then be at the uh, billionaire seller summit in Austin, Texas that Kevin is hosting the very next week. And we will do a second mini reveal to the attendees there, uh, probably at the end of one of the days. And uh, they'll again, get first dibs at what we're doing. And then uh, sometime in June, after those two events, we will disclose it to the public. So if you want to get on the inside track, if you've been following Kevin and Steve.com, uh, I highly recommend you attend one or both of these events if you can. Um, and just so you know that the KevinAndSteve.com um, opportunity is very limited. We will only have, you know, somewhere between 10 or 15. And it's not like anything you've ever uh, been exposed to. This is not a course. It's not a training. It's not coaching. It's not software. It's not a secret hack. It's not a mastermind. It's not a conference. It's not account management. We're not pitching groups, co-ops, or memberships. It's something, though, that is game-changing. I really think if you're not in the loop already, you should get out there and check it out. It really is something that we feel very strongly about. We're cooking up something special, and you want to get in on that uh, recipe, I'm sure. So go to kevinandsteve.com and make sure you're on the list if you're not already. The public will get the next batch of uh, information and invitation to an online uh, reveal once we do the in-person reveals at the Empowery Seattle Summit and the Billionaire Seller Summit. Now, I also want to um, point out that the Seattle Summit uh, put on by the Empowery Co-op does have some, I think there's just a few VIP tickets left, but there's some general admission tickets. And uh, if you are interested in going, don't hesitate to reach out uh, to Empowery. I know they have a couple general admission coupons for you uh, or contests or something going on. Uh, but go to empowery.com and hit the contact us link and just, you know, get your best deal on a general admission ticket. They're already cheap. They're like a thousand bucks. 
and uh, I think they they even have some special promotions if you if you don't already have a ticket. Uh, by the way, the events themselves, the Seattle Summit and the Billion Dollar Seller Summit, will have extraordinary content and be immense value on their own uh, with game changing ideas. And I'm talking about at the Seattle Summit, which I can talk about more because I'm involved with the the uh, organization and the the leadership of that. We're bringing in. Uh, an agency who can evaluate your product for Costco and tell you if you're ready or not. And if not, maybe even help you make a plan of how to get ready. Bringing in, you know, very professional company that helps you plan your exit so that you can maximize your valuation. Uh, bringing in uh, Tim Francis, and we'll talk about the most important hire you can make to change your life within 15 days. Uh, we've got uh, the great Rich Goldstein coming in, and he's going to be able to tell you how to deal with patents. Are you developing a product and you're concerned it's in potentially infringing on a patent or maybe you want to file a patent on your own? Rich is going to be there in person and all of us are going to be there, uh, Rich and Kevin and Tim and myself and, and so many others. And we're going to be there the entire time and mixing with the group. Uh, so I really, really welcome to the Seattle Summit. You can grab a VIP ticket if they're still available. Otherwise, general admission gets you in the first two days and that is way better than nothing. And, you know, for all those who say to themselves, well, I don't know if the money will be worthwhile or whatever. Honestly, if you can't get 10 times your investment uh, of coming to this event, you know, the, the ticket price, if you can't 10x that in the next year, you're just simply not doing it right. And uh, I, frankly, I, I'll tell you this, I'll offer you a personal guarantee. If, if you don't like the, the, the Seattle Summit after you came, write me a thousand word letter, uh, or a message within seven days and I'll personally write you a check <laughs> and give you your money back. So how's that for a guarantee? Uh, it really is a spectacular thing. You know, we'll have people from Amazon there. We will have uh, experts of all types. We're going to tell you a, an extraordinary launching strategy. So many things that I think are unique and actionable. So those, that's the technical side, but we also have the long-term strategic side. Why are we doing this? How do you build a company organization? Blah, 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 blah. So I'll probably do another Seattle Summit uh, podcast very soon because I really haven't done a good job of spreading the word about it. And I, I, I hate for people to miss out on something so special. So anyway, I appreciate you guys. Uh, thank you for listening. Please subscribe. Please leave iTunes reviews. Uh, those really help us rank. And, uh, and you know, uh, it's a pay it forward move. If you really are an awesomer, Go pay it forward, man. Uh, we're not charging anything for this. It gives you the chance to uh, get some good quality content. And we literally have a, like 150 hours of free content. And uh, you can share it. That's another great way to help us. So please be a pay it forward person. We appreciate you. And uh, let's, uh, you know, until next time, I want to just say thanks. And I hope to see you in China or Seattle or Austin or Vegas or wherever, wherever I am in the world. And I, uh, I love entrepreneurs. Thanks, everybody. See you later. Bye-bye.